In this video, I'm going to show you how I created these recipe cards from scratch. I'll go over the entire HTML structure and how I applied all the styling and hover effects with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a code pen that I'm currently working on. At the top of the page, I have a head element with a link to the font family that I'm going to use for the project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. In the CSS, I added a preprocessor of SCSS. And then I declared all of the variables in the root and then added some basic styling like adding a box sizing to border box and a margin and padding to zero. So to get started, first I'm going to define the entire HTML structure and then I'm going to apply the layout, styling, and all the hover effects with CSS. So to get started, I'm going to go into the body tags and I'm going to begin by creating a div with a class of card. So this will essentially represent each card on the page. And then within that card, I'm going to have two main sections of content. I'm going to have the card body, which will hold the image and the text. And then beneath that, I want a button that says view recipe. The reason why I'm breaking it up in this way is because I want that first div to be at the top of the container. And then I want that button to be at the bottom of the container. So to ensure that the elements are always arranged how I want it to be arranged, I'm going to actually use Flexbox within the card to arrange the elements in this way. And then within that card body, I'm going to have an image with a class of card image. I'm going to have an H2 element with a class of card title. And this will be the name of the recipe. And then beneath that, I want a little description. So I'm going to add a paragraph with a class of card description. So this is the structure of the card and now I'm just going to duplicate it several times and then add realistic content so that way we can actually see the elements on the page. So now we can actually see a realistic content on the page but we have quite a bit of work to do in terms of styling. We have to improve the styling of the elements and especially how the images are shown on the page. So to get started with the CSS, first I'm going to work on the overall layout of the page and then I'm going to work on the cards. So for this project, I'm going to use a mixture of grid and flexbox. For the actual layout of the cards, I'm going to use grid, but then within each card, I'm going to use flexbox. Now, again, I used SCSS as a preprocessor, which allows me to nest CSS elements. So that will make my code much more organized. So to get started within the body, I already declared the font family that I'm going to use for the project. And next I'm going to work on the overall layout. So first I'm going to add a margin of two REM and I'm going to set the display to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And then beneath that, I'm going to define how I want the columns to look on the page. So I actually want this to be completely responsive without any media queries at all. So I'm going to reference the grid template columns, and then I'm going to set it to a repeat auto fit with a min max value. If this is new to you, I highly recommend watching my previous video about making responsive layouts using grid without any media queries. I'll link that video in the description below as well. What this is basically saying is that instead of defining exactly how many columns I need, I'm going to let the browser decide how many columns should fit on the page. So that's why I added auto fit here. And then in terms of the size of the cards, I want them to be a little bit flexible to go from 12 REM to 16 REM in size. And then I also added a grid gap and I justified the content in the center. Next, I'm going to work on each individual card. So first I'm going to reference the card class and I'm going to set the overflow to hidden and I'm going to add a particular box shadow around it. So now we can actually see the bounding area of the card. Then I'm going to add a little bit of a border radius 
And then I'm going to work on the alignment of the content within the card. So within each card, I'm going to set it to a display of flex with a flex direction of column. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if I increase the size of this window, you can see that the size of each card are all identical, but how the content flows in each card is dependent on the content within the card. So in order for all the cards to look good one right next to each other, I'm going to set some properties with Flexbox. I always want the image and the content to be at the top and I always want the button to be at the bottom. In this case, you can see that because this image is so large, it's pushing all this content at the bottom, which is making all of these cards really, really big. In this way, the button to view the recipe is not in the same place for every card. It's dependent on the content within the card. So I want to control that a bit more. So here I'm going to set the display of this to flex, and then I'm going to set the flex direction to column. Now, when I increase the window, we really don't see that much of a difference yet. So the next property I'm going to add is a justify content and I'm going to set a two space between. And the reason why I'm doing that is because now it will allow the second element in that flex box to be pinned to the bottom area of the page, which is this view recipe button. So although the cards are not perfectly styled yet, we can see that the buttons are all in the same place regardless of the content that's actually within the card. So that's looking quite a bit better. And then I also want each card to be a clickable element, so I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. And then I know I'm going to want to add some hover effects later on, so I'm going to add a transition here of the transform property that will take place in 200 milliseconds with an ease in. Then within that card class, I'm going to apply all the styling to each of the elements that's laid out in the HTML. So first was that class of card, and now I'm going to apply styling for the actual images and then the text. So in here, I'm going to write and image. And for that image, I want to apply certain rules so that way it always looks good regardless of the original image size. So here I'm going to set the height to 12 REM. I'm going to set the width to 100% so that way it spans the entire card. And in order to remove any distortion, I'm going to set the object fit to cover. So now all of the images retain their original aspect ratio. Then I'm going to add some styling for the title. So I'm going to write and title. And for the title, I'm just going to add some padding of one REM. Then for the description, I'm going to add some padding as well. And then I'm going to style the actual button. So I'm going to write and button at the bottom. And for this button, I'm also going to add a padding as well. I want the font to match the other font that we have in the project. So I'm going to set the font family to inherit. I'm going to set the font weight to bold and I'm going to modify the font size. I'm going to set the margin of this to one REM. I'm going to modify the border of this to be two pixels, solid, and a primary color. I'm going to set the background to transparent. I'm going to set the color of the text to that primary color as well. I'm going to apply the same radius as the card. And then I'm also going to add a hover effect for this button as well. So I'm going to add a transition here, but I'm going to specify the background and the color and I'm going to set the two of these to 200 milliseconds, ease in. Great, so now we have these cards and they're actually looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to add some hover effects. So beneath this, I'm going to write and hover, which will apply a hover effect to the entire card. And for this hover effect, I want to slightly transform the scale. So now if I hover over it, we can see that the scale of it slightly changes. And then I also want that button to change when the card is hovered upon as well. So beneath this, I'm going to write and hover, and then I'm going to apply effect to the button. So then I'm going to write and button, and I'm going to modify the background color of the button and the color of the text. So now if I hover over the card, the color of the button actually changes as well. So there you go. That's how I created these recipe cards using only HTML and CSS. So just to go over what I did in the HTML, I laid out the content using the BEM model. 
I created a div with a class of card and then I placed all the content within that card. For the card body, I included an image, a title, and a description. And then beneath that, I included a button. I added realistic content to the page and then I applied all the styling with CSS. Within the CSS, I laid out all the content with grid, and then for each card, I actually set it to a display of flex. So that way I could control how I wanted the content to flow within the card. So I applied certain styling for the card, for the images, and then for the text. For the button, I added some default styling, and then I added other effects to make it really pop. So there you go. That's how I created these recipe cards using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.